uh, topic and Ronald Bautista will close in uh, the event. And remember that at the end we're going to have a ruffle, mm -hmm. a very uh, 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 surprise. Uh, and at the end we will uh, pass by the evaluation form and give you a present if you complete uh, 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 all of it. Okay, so this presentation, as you may see, uh, is going to be focused on health services for students at your member institutions like you are, and it's going to be uh, a, a shared presentation by me, Jelisa Castro, our executive assistant, and also Monica Mercado uh, is going to have a, a participation during the presentation. But first of all, let's, uh, the presentation objectives is uh, give you a summary because is a lot of services that we have in, in, in the virtual plus portal that we have. Totally free of charge, but we're going to give you a summary so you can, in your house, since everything is online, you can then go and, and browse our website and then uh, see a, and benefit from all of this. We also invite you, as uh, again, to benefit from it and also promote, help us promoting it. Because sometimes uh, students, when we uh, we have sent all this information to your deans and everyone, but if they don't share share it with you, you don't know that those uh, services exist. Uh, so we are encourage you uh, as leaders uh, to help us promoting with your peers, your friends, to everyone. Okay. And at the end, we're gonna sh you're gonna share your feedback with us through the evaluation form, and also uh, we're gonna open a well. A, a Q and A, a section. If you have any ideas, recommendations, or any questions, feel free to interrupt me on, during my presentation, but also at the end, okay? At the end of or of, of the event. But let me give you first. Uh, uh, let me give you uh, an overview of what it has. It stands for Hispanic Educational Technology Services, and we are the first bilingual consortium dedicated to serving the higher education needs of the fast-growing Hispanic communities that you know that every time is growing and growing more. Uh, our members uh, are universities and colleges uh, located at Puerto Rico, Florida, Kansas, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Texas, Massachusetts. We also have a new one in Missouri, uh, seven new members in California, and we also have universities in Colombia. And we also have corporate partners and nonprofit organizations like Blackboard, uh, Oracle, Cengage, Grupo Parada, who Ronald is representing here, uh, and others. We, uh, if we see uh, how many students we potentially can serve, if we add the total, total students enrolled last academic year, finishing on 20, June 2015, it, 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 they were more than 800,000 800, students, and 69% of them are located in the U.S., since the majority of our member institutions are here in the United States, and followed by 25% in Puerto Rico. If we break down the heads member's profile uh, in, into states, you will see that Texas is the one who has the most uh, students enrolled, the you know, member institutions of Texas, Followed by Puerto Rico, then California, and finally uh, New York. I mean, um, New York, and then the others. And New York have more than 100,000 uh, students uh, in the seven, eight member institutions that we serve here. Uh, uh, our major authority is the presidents of all member institutions who are part of the consortium. They are called heads board of directors. This is a picture taken on June. 2015 at the Peterman Hall at the NCC, and the meetings uh, are like this. Uh, they sit uh, together to, twice a year uh, to establish and monitor the organization, also identify needs, common needs, uh, in order to develop new services to serve not only your U.S. students, but also the, the faculty and the administrators. Uh, our mission approved at the last strategic plan is to promote, support, and increase the capabilities at, of member institutions in order to enhance Hispanic, Latino student success and opportunities in higher education. And let me clarify that although our focus is Hispanic communities, our services can be, uh, you know, are, can impact any students because there is not, you know, 
in any restriction on that. So that's very important to emphasize. Our portal is heads.org, O-R-G, and it looks like, that's a screen screen, looks like this, and here you will find information about heads. Over here, was news, not only in, in heads as an organization, but also uh, sometimes member institutions send us uh, events or any uh, uh, news that they want to share with everyone, and we post it there as well. We have uh, our services, a, a summary of all of the services with the links to them, information of, uh, of our memberships. Also, we have a direct link to the faculty placita and the student placita, which are the places of where the students' uh, services are provided. And we will be talking today uh, of our online services. And this will be a shared presentation with Jelitsa and me. I will start and, and she will continue. Uh, first of all, uh, although you can click in the student uh, placita in the Heads website, you can also go directly because the virtual plaza has their own URL, which is virtualplaza.org. And this is our virtual center for academic and support resources for faculty, administrators, and of course, students. And those, uh, uh, this place was uh, uh, built well or created with a federal grant that we obtained in, 20, uh, in 2000. And we developed a lot of resources, but we every year continue uh, updating the information and adding more services. Uh, we estimate that if each institution wants to replicate the services that we have in place, in the virtual plaza, they have to invest more than $100,000 uh, because we have a lot of diaries that we will show you uh, soon and other services and tutorials, uh, online courses and, 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 and by one entrepreneurship courses that we're going to show you. And, and so, but these uh, for your students are totally free of charge and we invite you to take advantage of it. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, explain the testing allocation and then Jelisa will continue with the other database. When you register, you receive a flyer uh, with that information on one of the most popular services that we have for students and this is called the Testing and Education Reference Center. This is a database that is provided by Cengage, one of our partners in collaboration with ETS, which is the one who do the test, admission test. And in this database, if you need to search for scholarship, internships, and practice tests like GRE, LSAT, if you're interested in law, NCLEX, if you're a nursing, NCAT, US citizen, military tests, also auditor, real estate, etc., you can click on the student placita, follow the instructions in the flyer, click on the Testing and Education Reference Center, and it will take you to the a place, a page like this. And then uh, when you have to look under, in your case, under United States, look for the name of your institution. When you click the name of your institution, then you enter the passcode that was provided in the flyer, and then you are already in the database. Each institution has an account for one reason, because we want to track uh, the use of these databases and also uh, in order to continue promoting and also give the reports to the presidents who are the ones who pay the fees, uh, the membership dues, that help us support uh, these kind of services. So it's important that you use this account so you can count for, you know, you know, for your institution. Uh, when you uh, go there, you, will, you can browse the, the platform or the database. They have uh, high school tools, college prep, career tools, graduate schools, and international tools. And you will find there not only the practice test, but also the ebooks. You can download it to uh, uh, get prepared for the text. And there are more than 300 practice exams, again, with the ebooks to get prepared. And we invite you with time. Uh, so usually, in Puerto Rico, we use a lab, a laboratory, and then everybody sign in, and we do like a demonstration. But here, since the time is limited, and what we want is you to know where you, you can find the services and you know you're very techy savvy. Yeah, any what question? What kind of exam do you have to prepare for, like to be a member, like to register for this? No, no, you only need to know where, where is the database located. So oh, you only have to follow the instructions, go to Virtual Plaza, yes. 
then click on student placita and let me show you very quickly since we have this question I have open here. For example, if you go to heads, you go to student, the student placita, right here. Then the next steps will be click on the testing and education reference center link. And then uh, you are from what? BNC? Yes. Okay, we look under United States for Bottom yes. Manhattan Com uh, Community College, and then uh, oh, it's already open because I already put the, the sign in when I was doing the setup this morning. Put the passcode, and then it will take you here. And when you go here, you will see you can browse high school tools. College Fred tools, career tools, graduate schools, international tools, and if you go down here, they have the family college planning, which have a lot of resources and your planning guide, student checklist to get prepared for college, also test preparations, as I saw, uh, I mentioned to you, college search, uh, advice center articles. They have also school search, very comprehensive because remember that it's not like you go to Google and say I want to do this, no. That, that searchers, uh, the way they do it is they ask questions. What kind of school you want, if you want uh, these, these schools have to have dormitories or you are interested more in the academic uh, uh, credentials or in the athletic. Depending what you put in the, in the, in the questions, then the search is going to come out uh, and you know the results. And also have a very important part that is paid for college. And this database features more than $8 billion in scholarship because not only have the, the regular ones, you know, the, the Pell Grant or FASA that you know, have a lot of foundations, organizations that pays for college in different fields uh, and also for masters and graduates uh, uh, degrees that sometimes it's difficult to find a scholarship for graduate school. So you can go here and depending where you are interested in, in, in paid for college, you can find information. So we invite you to browse. It's very easy to browse this database so you can benefit uh, from it. And let me go back to any other question about the letter? No? Okay. Let me go back to the presentation. Because I want to show you. Uh, also, for example, if you want to do the NCLEX, you're a nurse. No, accounting. Ah, well, I have the accounting too, the, the, yeah. the audit uh, oh, yeah. test, yeah. Yes. so you can practice. Okay. But for example, if you're a nurse and you want to practice the NCLEX, that is the, the text that uh, nurses have to do, uh, the, you, first you have to create an account in the database, because in that sense, the, you will have a profile and everything, every search for scholarship, or everything you do, every test you take, is going to score a, a, a safe under your profile, every time you do sign in, sign in, you sign in, you will see everything. When you sign in, then you have access to the test. When you finish the test, you press in the in the top uh, score, and it will give you a report like this. The the English have a total of 20, 200 questions, and if you see, it says that definitely I'm not a nurse because I only have 50 correct. And uh, in correct, I have 149 and not answer one. I didn't answer one. And it showed you how, how, what was the correct ones, what was the incorrect ones. And if you click in the incorrect ones, it's going to take you to the original question and let you know why it was incorrect, what was the correct one. Okay, so it's a very, you not only learn practicing the test, but also when you re uh, receive the report, you will see what you are doing good, what you are doing wrong. And also remember that you have the book, the ebook to prepare to, for the test, so that helps you too as well. And uh, again, the Family Planning Center is a lot of resources with more than $8 billion in scholarship, including graduate degrees, as I mentioned to you before, and you, uh, you know already where, where I uh, uh, show you this. And then, Jelita, uh, the it's gonna in, in the meantime she came she's is getting helping us with the logistic. Uh, the career transitions uh, database the same is the same. You go to the virtual plaza, student placita, click on the career transitions link, 
and then uh, it takes you to the put the same is the same uh, passcode and take you to the place that I show you here. And in this one, where we, when you look for jobs, inter uh, help you look for jobs, internships, prepare your resume, practice an interview, also have information about careers, etc. And let me show you very quickly. For example, uh, we click BNCC, which, which already we have it open. When you put the password, take you here. Uh, you click on career transition. And um, what is the zip code of New York? What? One zip code? 10128. 10128. 28. Okay, let's see. I want to find uh, a jobs position around this area. It's going to show you all the positions that are open within 25 miles, but you can uh, narrow this, either put it a uh, wire or, or narrow it. Uh, and those are more than 10 pages, and they show you that the Holy, Holy Inn, for example, has a guest service agent, a Department of Social Science in Manhattan. We have a lot of casual university state postal service. So you will see all the different options, and you can continue page to page. We uh, recommend that you can also narrow the search for job title. But since you don't know how the company is going to put the name of, you know, of the position probably you're looking for, uh, we invite, uh, we recommend that you leave that open. When you get familiar how they put the, the titles, then you can narrow it. But you can also look for internship. If you put here internship, press, uh, click there and search again, uh, you will see that, for example, you just need your police department in Manhattan are looking for an internship on NYPD, uh, also Brooklyn, CPC, Brooklyn, internship again. So a lot of yeah, the ones here from uh, John Jay uh, could benefit from it. So you have more than 10 pages on internships. So we invite you also have a application, this word, uh, I don't know how to pronounce, and then uh, a, a part-time uh, positions and also entry level. So you can uh, browse around here and search again depending what you are interested in. And let, let me introduce you to Jalitza. Uh, she's our executive assistant at the office and she's the one who uh, helps us uh, in, in all the logistics when we do events. So you can, she can continue showing you if we go back to home the other services that the career transition have. Okay, as okay, let's continue uh, with other services that you will have available that you have available at the virtual class at the career transitions. Uh, you can, on this area, you can also uh, find uh, excellent templates. Very complete templates for you to, to prepare your resume and, um, and be assured that it will be an, an, a, good, a good one. And also with that resume, you can also create the cover, a cover letter and, all, and the, the service that is more, most likely to be used here in this area is the interview simulation. On this, on this, uh, on this link, you will have uh, an exercise in which, for example, uh, you go through some kind of questions uh, with an automated uh, uh, person that is there with a, a program that is there, and it's going to evaluate by uh, selection of alternatives that they give you and uh, how good or how not good are you selecting the questions so though that will give you an idea on how to behave or, or select your, your answers uh, at the time when you go to a, an actual interview. Um, we have time for the, for the summit. We have time? Let's, let's try to, to do a, a brief sample here. Okay, este, yo sé, eh, when you go here, 
you have to read the instructions, then click continue. It's going to show you what you're going to do before the interview simulator, during the interview, and after the, the interview. When you read that, then you're ready to uh, uh, close the window, and then you're ready uh, to do the simulation. You may choose a profile if you have a, a very little worse experience, or if you have more. Let's uh, start with this one. And in this case, uh, it will show you what is the organization information you need to know uh, to answer the question, you know, the, the, the organization who is looking for the, the, the job. Also, what is the job about, the description and qualifications, and the, the exercise is going to give you a profile that you have in order to answer the questions. When you have to read the three of them in order to start, and then that's going to be our Hi. I'm Susan Baldwin, Human Resources Specialist with Infinity Tech Incorporated. It's nice to meet you. If, you if you're ready, you let's go to the conference room and conduct your interview. So you press continue and then you start to do questions. It's very funny because depending what you answer, uh, it's very interactive. Your academic achievements, as well as your volunteer and work experiences, are quite impressive. Let's do one. So tell me, why do you want to work for Infinity Tech? I select this one, and then I submit. Thank you. I'm going to ask you several questions. I'd like you to answer each question with a related example from your past. Let's begin. Tell me about a time when you identified a problem before it got out of control. Okay, depending what I, depending what I this, uh, How would example, you have approached that problem if you had been in your friend's situation? She changed. But if you answer correct, she's going to still happy. And at the end, when you finish all the questions, it's going to give you a report and it's going to give you, they have, uh, the top is four stars. If you do well, you will have the four stars. If not, you're going to have one, two. And they're going to give you where your, the areas you have to, you know, uh, written, uh, what are the areas you have to emphasize. So, uh, it's very interesting. We invite you to take advantage uh, of this since uh, is fa this uh, interview simulator is following the STARS model that a lot of companies use in order to do interviews, okay? okay. Thank you, Jibo. So, um, let's go back to the presentation. And uh, here's how you get to the, the website we were right now. Similar to the Testing and Educational Reference Center, you go to the list of uh, heads member institutions, choose your institution, uh, write down, uh, enter the, the password that we gave you. Uh, if someone needs their password or have any doubts, please come to me or Monica or Yvelke before you leave, so we can give you the access code to, for you to, to get access to this. Oh, we already talked about the search of uh, yeah. jobs and the other services available. And also, in, uh, for those who uh, doesn't have the codes, we have created a banner in our website, heads.org, heads in which uh, they send us an email, mess an email message with their personal information, any student or person, and uh, we reply with a message with a, uh, with a temporary uh, access code uh, which is for the HEADS account, so they can uh, uh, go through the website and take advantage of these free of charge services. And in addition, we, uh, on the student uh, placita, we have the career exploration module. We would like, uh, we, we like to talk about this because, for example, uh, students that are for, uh, maybe on the first or second year, they don't have clear of what they're going to study, or they don't, they're not sure if they're on the correct path. So on this, on this uh, section of the, of the Placita, there are several tests that the student can go through and do, and it's very interesting because it's, it will recommend you uh, not what to do, but what will be the best uh, study areas or professional jobs for you based on your on your personality and based on, on your on what you like or you don't like, and also the area in which you live, which are the most uh, profitable or the most easy to to find jobs, depending on the area that you live. I'm sorry. So 
so that's the yeah, yeah that's the the yeah. Light. Yeah. And also in a collaboration with Christian University of Pennsylvania, we uh, we have included in the virtual plaza uh, several non-credit courses, uh, uh, interactive videos, uh, either in English or Spanish, for those who would like to start their their business. Uh, it, it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter if you're already graduated or if you're still studying. They give you uh, some. Uh, uh, some let's go to see some of the of the courses that are there. On the page one, you see uh, click here to see a list of, of the downloadable uh, courses. You click which is this here, this first link. Here are a list of, of the categories in which they are in which they are. Uh, Courses available. Uh, there's a, there's some uh, that are available or available only in Spanish. But for example, let's go to. No, in Spanish they have translated. It translated all of it, but they are all together. It's not. They are not categorized as uh, uh, So you have the whole list. So if you prefer Spanish, you can have the tutorial in Spanish as well. But in English, you have to go through the categories depending what you when you like. Uh, any any area that you would like to see, for example? Any? Accounting, business operation, in yeah. Spanish, perhaps? Accounting, yeah. Accounting? Okay, yeah. let's go to accounting. Okay, let's go to how to prepare a balance sheet. Okay. So here uh, they will ask you for a, a brief profile. So Okay. Yeah. A brief profile. That's for. Yeah, that's for purpose of knowing who is using the services. It's not a close. It's open. So when you submit, you go right away. So this is an Welcome example. Welcome to preparing a balance sheet. A file oh, file with a advisor. To navigate through the. The first step in preparing your balance sheet is to list your company's assets. So your current assets include. Okay. The third and, section of the and balance so sheet. On should list the stockholders' equity. Oh, mm -hmm. so I only have five, five more minutes, so let's go back to, to our services. So that's what we just saw. And also there are a lot of uh, additional tools and resources area on the student readiness uh, link that you will find not only uh, information if uh, it's better for you to, to go through a, a traditional education or virtual education. Uh, also, there will provide some uh, tools for the traditional environment or either if you prefer to go virtual. And, some, and also, there's a, a English and Spanish uh, uh, tools that are available there. And, and in, on the web 2.0 to, uh, tools, we are constantly adding links for you to to have the mo the, the latest information of what's going out, including the study guides and strategies, uh, which are available in either in English or in Spanish. And also, there's a whole uh, page for you to identify. In addition to the financial aids that you get from your institution, other scholarships that are available for uh, from our member institutions, and also a page which is uh, dedicated for uh, scholarships uh, only for Hispanics. So you can go there and research about. And also an additional an, an additional page for you to look for internships uh, in your area that we are constantly. Uh, uh, okay. the update. So now uh, I'm going to let you with Monica, uh, which is one of our, of our students, uh, head advisory committee member, and she will talk to you about her experience and talk to you uh, a little bit more about this program we just started. Thank you. Showcases. They 
event that we are doing here. We also do that in Puerto Rico. Uh, every, that's the second year we do this in New York. That's the, you can find in the student corner uh, the highlights of the event we held in, at the NCC last April. And as a result, that's pictures of the event. And as a result of this event, we uh, make an invitation to all students who participate like you today to be part of the advisory committee and the benefits then uh, Monica will tell you the benefits right there <laughs> since she is one of them. Yes, um, one of the benefits of being, of being part of the advisory committee is the opportunity of participating at the board of directors uh, meetings and present at the events, for example, like this kind of events for students. Sometimes it's like students like fear, fear, um, um, how can I say it? Um, exactly, 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 like a peer dialogue, dialogue and they like that because we're the same age, around the same age, and around we have the, the same like um, visions about studying academics, we're on that like path. Um, also coordinate events and projects that support their needs. Some, some of these uh, students are part of the committee. They are always looking for um, spaces to promote this event, these services, head services, or also they give us ideas of what other students need in other institutions. So we go there and we enhance and give them more information regarding to their needs. Um, also experience, this experience can be included in their resumes, uh, recommendation letter, letters, and you can send your resume with a letter explaining why is the best, what, why is the best candidate, see, why is the best candidate before May 6, 2016 to, to our um, email address. But you also get the chance to uh, participate like in this for this example, like uh, to travel with the staff and, and be part of, of, of the uh, activities and get to know, um, you know, and have more more experience. So basically, it um, enhances you professionally and academically because they give you also the support. Um, so it's pretty great and it's really comfortable. You can you you can call them and and you know they're very. Um, available and up to any idea that students need. So that would be my part for that. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Yeah. We want to bring also uh, Monica start with in our office as an intern student and now she has a service contract and also she's part of the advisory committee as well as these uh, ones over here and we'll make sure that you can find more information about this opportunity in the student leadership corner on uh, their current advisory committee. And finally, uh, did you like the head services? Please use it. It's only a click away at the virtual plaza. And please share them with your peers and friends. Instead of the databases that we, you have access to free of charge, uh, this is an unlimited access, so you can share it with your friends, your cousins, your family, we don't care. The important thing is that the information came from a member institution, that is your case. So please uh, share it to everyone because what we're gonna do is serve through these services and then finally send your recommendations or any link of any service or any app, any, something that is free of charge that you can think it could be nice to help students that we can upload it in the repository of services at the virtual plaza and you can send the link to the, and I own any idea also or recommendation to info at heads.org. And finally, uh, we invite you to follow up at the social media accounts that we have. We have Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, and YouTube. And again, uh, for more information, you can either contact me, Jerixa Castro, or Monica, uh, who are the staff at the office. The office is at the Inter-American University in Puerto Rico, Metropolitan Campus. Those are the extension, but you can also uh, look for us by email. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any question, okay, Amy. Okay. Yes, um, to uh, register for the service, um, do you have to be Hispanic or is there a major in school? Like, is it open for everyone, like for my friends and everything? And exactly, everything? yeah. Okay. A, a, for the virtual plaza, a, all services are open except a body.
but the ones that we say BB the flyer, because you need the code in order to access uh, the databases, because this is an exclusive uh, service for our member institutions. Yeah. But once, since you are a student at BNCC, for example, once you have the code, we are giving you the authorization and approval to share it with everyone because okay. it's an unlimited access. And it doesn't um, necessarily pertain to one particular major, like if you major No, anyone, college, anyone, anyone, because as you may see, the yeah. resources is to complement, you okay. know, the, the career uh, uh, centers that you have at the school. Right. But, if they, 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 but those are totally online and free of charge. So you can share it with everyone. And that's what we want, that you promote it and, and you benefit from it, okay? So we can share this work on yes. the flyer, this type? Yes, yes. Okay. The only thing that, that you cannot do is publish it in a website open. That's why we have a banner that you get the code, you have to sign in, uh, submit the information, and then you receive a, a reply because we cannot okay. put the code open to the whole you know, universe. But once you have the code as a student, then you can share it uh, through email or anything, anything that is not uh, public, okay? okay? Any other question? But thank you, thank you so much, Nay. Uh, we have a very interesting in, in, uh, presentation with, let me, I know, Amy, what's the last name? Sorry, 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 yeah, it's kind of, uh, today we are having a very, Interesting names. Este, let me look for your presentation so you can continue. Right here. Okay, and I'm going to uh, PowerPoint. Excellent. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Thank you. By the way, she's from Berkeley College. She's going to tell me one of our member institutions, and they choose to bring the fan club. And, and uh, she's going to be talking how you maximize your networking opportunities with LinkedIn. Thank you. It's very nice to be here. Thank you. Um, so a little bit about me. Yes, I'm a LinkedIn expert. LinkedIn even says that I'm an expert. Um, I've got proof of that. There's something called a social selling index on LinkedIn. And it's based on four different categories. Establishing your brand which means letting the world know who you think you are. And engaging with insight, which means not just clicking like on every single post there is, but actually creating content, sharing ideas, sharing articles, uh, building relationships, which means actually connecting with real human beings on LinkedIn, and finding the right people. You can connect to anyone, but are they the right people? So on a scale of 100, I'm at 93%. I watched a LinkedIn seminar yesterday, and there were four people that were really proud of themselves. They were superstars. One was 64, one was 75, one was 83, and I'm sitting there on mute saying, I'm 83. I should be running this seminar. So basically, in my team at work, we're 72%. People in my industry are only 17%, and people in my network are 42%, and I'm in the 1%. So I'm a LinkedIn guru. I get up at about 3.40 in the morning to get to work. I don't have that long a commute, but I have that long a time to get myself ready. And that's when I start posting, because the rest of the world is asleep. So when they come to work and they go on LinkedIn, I'm the first thing they read. And then I do it at lunch. Well, I'm lying. I have two screens up. So when I'm on hold, I'm posting and reposting. I'm always on LinkedIn. I have students in the elevator who say, I think I know you. I don't know why, because they know my little face. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I take an express bus from the Bronx. I've been born and raised in the Bronx, lived in the Bronx my whole life. And the people who follow me on Instagram are from Australia. And they're like, wow, that's a really cool building. It's burnt down. It's got graffiti. Yes. You know, they've got little ponds and trees and boring. So I'm all over Instagram. Take a look. Poet Amy Seven. The person who helped me with this PowerPoint thought it was a, a cute idea to write that I have over 100 years of career development because I'm always telling my students, I'm 100. I sometimes feel that I am. I literally have been getting people jobs in some shape or form for almost 40 years. I probably should start lying at this point because I know my students are calculating, well, if it's 40 years. And I always tell the joke, I met my husband online and I've been married for 30 some odd years and they're like, how? I'm like, I was online in the supermarket. You know, there's other all <laughs> You know, and there's my poor daughter saying, how old is that joke? 
But whenever I find new people, it's not old. It works every time. See you left. I've been with Berkeley for seven years. When I started at Berkeley, I had 50 connections on LinkedIn. Okay. Just a little facts and figures. LinkedIn was launched in 2003. Um, professionals join at two, mem two members per second. That's a lot of people. More than 225 million members in 200 countries. There are, nine, there are 29 different, 19 different languages. Um, more than 2.9 million company pages are on LinkedIn, which is the best place for you to get research. Every company, 2.9 million organizations, have a page on LinkedIn. What does the company do? When were they founded? Who's working there? Who's hiring? For what? Who just left? Who just started? What are the trends? Everything you need to know on one screen. LinkedIn members conducted over 5.7 billion searches. And that was in 2012. I don't even know what's going on now. That's a huge number. I love these numbers. So 332 is how many million members are on LinkedIn. 42 million are the unique mobile visits per month. 25 million are the profiles viewed in 24 hours. I'm not good in math, so I enlisted a whole bunch of people to tell me that that means 1,041,666 per hour. New members. Okay, one in three. One in three human beings in the planet, the globe, are on LinkedIn. Isn't that crazy? That's a lot of human beings. If you put a picture on your profile, you will be viewed 11 times more than if there's no picture. This number I really like. 930 is the average number of connections that most CEOs have. 12,000 when this slide was put together was the amount of connections I have, but now it's 12,166 because I checked this morning. Okay, 39 million students and recent graduates are on LinkedIn. 13% of all millennials are on LinkedIn. There's a new user every two seconds. And 56% 56, 56 of males versus 44% of females. Recruiters look at 7 million LinkedIn profiles each day. So if you are on LinkedIn and your profile is good, they're not just looking at your tagline, they're reading your profile, which is what you want. You want to get creative with your professional brand. I'm, not, well, I'm a very creative person, but I do want to be creative with my brand because who I am is Assistant Vice President of Career Services and Alumni Relations at Berkeley. I, as you know, I'm all over Instagram, so I change the background of my picture a couple of days each month. That's Grand Central Station. I'm across the street from Grand Central Station, and really, in reality, have never worked anywhere outside of these 17 blocks. It's insane, really. Michael Iris is the assistant, is a senior director of online career services. He's young. He's a millennial, so he has trees and grass, and he's. You know, he calls himself providing innovative social media and career development alumni engagement. He doesn't just have his title. He's a different brand. He's young, innovative, and that's how he's attracted people to his profile. If you want to look for a job, that's where you start. You need to start on LinkedIn. Um, if you put your skills on, it will be viewed 13 times more than if you have no skills listed. 94% of recruiters are on LinkedIn, and only 36% of job seekers. So if you're a job seeker on LinkedIn, your chances have risen tons. 89% of all recruiters have recruited someone from LinkedIn. We know now today that 25% of recruiters are looking at Career Builder, Monster, and Indeed. The rest of them are on LinkedIn, looking at profiles and getting recommendations and referrals. They're not going to the job boards where you're dropping your resume into that black hole. It's not happening anymore. It's LinkedIn. If you, how many of you have a LinkedIn profile? How many of you are on Facebook? How many of you can show your Facebook profile to your grandmother? Okay, good. Make sure that's always the case. There are social media experts hired at every company. The first thing they do when they get your resume is they Google you. And they want to make sure that only good stuff comes up. If you are on LinkedIn, LinkedIn will come up first. If you're always on Facebook, it's going to take them a while to find your profile. Yes? I have a question. What if your Facebook is private? Can they That's good. 
Yeah, but you still want to make sure that all of your friends don't have pictures of you that you wish they didn't. Right. We have someone who works in our company. She's been with, with Berkeley 27 years. If we can't find a student, Anna will. And if Anna doesn't find them on her Facebook page, she will track them down on someone else's. So if you're holding the world's largest glass of beer, this is the time to remove it from your Facebook page. <laughs> okay. Setting up the profile, your face. It's smiling. It's professional. It's not a selfie face. I am so tired of seeing. I don't even understand what that is. And I think sometimes what happens is we look at the mirror and I'm like, oh my god, I look good today. So you take a picture of yourself looking at yourself. I said to a student the other day, how was dinner? And she said, what do you mean? I said, if I'm not mistaken, in your profile picture, that's a lobster tank. And I think you picked that one. If you went to a wedding and you look really good, I'm glad. I'm glad you look really good. That's not for LinkedIn picture. You have a daisy in your hair. There's Uncle Joe in the back. Even if you crop out the cousins, we know the cousins were there. We don't want two faces, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your girlfriend, your brother. No. We don't want you in a car with a seatbelt. We don't want you on a mountain. We don't want you with anybody but a boring picture. So there's no background to distract. And it's professional. That. That, that bubble there that has no face is the worst. That's like going to a career fair with a bag over your head. <laughs> now, in my day, back in the Stone Age, when we first started to recruit, all of the stuff that you see on LinkedIn was pretty much discriminatory. I didn't know, want to know what you look like or kind of how old you are. None of that was good stuff. But now we need pictures on LinkedIn. So if you don't have a picture on LinkedIn, you're even louder. The nice thing, though, is you're thinking to yourself, well, now this recruiter gets to see me. You also get to see the recruiter before you meet this person. How did it, it change and why? Excuse me? How did it change and why the importance of knowing a person's face? Or not? Well, once LinkedIn took off and we were able to use social media as a way of getting jobs and engaging with people, people put their pictures up there so that they can make their brand. So if you're not, a recruiter is looking and saying, why don't you have a picture up there? What am I going to be seeing? What are you afraid of? Are you, do you have a lack of confidence? You have to be on an even playing field. What if if everybody person, has your picture, you need to put your picture up. What if a person just doesn't want to be judged by their looks? Eventually they will be if they're going on that interview. I have found recruiters will pass by, and I will. If I'm looking at 17 different recruiters, I'm only looking at profiles with faces. You want to be out there, be out there. And when people look at your profile and they see anonymous heads, really? Why are we here? We're here to network. And if you're uptight about how you look, get a professional headshot. There's, there's really no way around it. If you don't have a picture, your chances of being viewed and reached out to are significantly lower. I didn't have a picture up for years, literally. And every time I did a LinkedIn workshop, there was always a student who'd say, but Mrs. S. And finally, one student asked me if I was running from the law. So needless to say, I went back to my office, handed my phone to a friend, smiled, and said, take the picture, and there it is. What do they see when they see you? What does your headline say? I picked a few that I think are awesome. One of my coworkers, career Swiss army knife, forever optimistic. Well, we know what a Swiss army knife is. It has all those little things in there. So that means she does all these little great things. And she's optimistic. Well, you need to be in career services. I love this one. I don't know who you are, but I will find you and I will recruit you. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a good recruiter. Yeah. So I looked at her profile and I reached out and asked if I can use it for the slide. She, of course, said yes. Of course, I would have used it even if she didn't, but it was nice for me to ask. Okay, now this next one is only seven words. Connecting top talent with New York City's best organizations. There's no way around that. That's what this person does. If I wanted to either hire someone to connect someone, or I needed a connection myself, I'd look at that. Left and right brain thinker. Now, I don't know which side of the brain is the creative and the poetry and the photography. That's mine. The other side never woke up. I never passed a math class in my life. <laughs> Out of sheer intrigue, I looked at that profile. Bleeding for his art. Who wouldn't look at that one? That's dramatic. I want to know what this guy was into. Living the dream. I had to look at that just because I didn't think he was. <laughs> so I wanted to see what that was. And 
And that picture was this young guy, and he had on glasses, and he had a ski in one hand, and a bicycle next to him, and I think he like ran up a mountain. And he's just like one of these young athletic guys who does everything. So he might actually be living a dream. Art creator, creator of art, that was deep. So I was an art student. I loved, it was interesting. This is short and sweet. Experienced sales professional looking to positively impact in your organization. Let's connect. Now, I'm getting feelings of like New York Life Insurance and Aflac and, you know, cosmetics. But if you're looking for someone very salesy, that's someone who would be good in bill collecting and in admissions. You name it. This is a salesy person. Your summary. It's short and sweet, but it tells your story. Who is your audience? Who are you trying to relate to? What do you want them to know about you, and what do you want them to feel? It should be short, three to four paragraphs. It needs to tell the reader what your passions and skills are, and it's a chance for them to see how amazing you are. Your summary should not be personal pronouns. I am this, and I am that, and I did that. Just like you would keep that off your resume. It also shouldn't be Susie did this, and Susie did that. I always ask, who's Susie, and who are you talking? So you want to short and sweet. Career education and resume writing. Accounting principles, expert at. You want to use words that are no personal pronouns. You also want to use things that, that matter, like numbers. Have you increased revenue? Have you driven a sales team by a certain amount? Have you used numbers percentages? Have you exceeded revenue from the year before? Numbers make people look at your profile. What do you do better than anyone else? Are you a good listener? Can you review reams of data? Do you make meetings fun? The one thing about LinkedIn is it's not your resume. So you can be creative. You can use different language. You can make it interesting. The point is when people are trolling, to get them to look at you. You also want to validate. You want recommendations, GPA, awards. Do you all look at that little box who viewed my profile? Right in the top? I look at it very often because that's how I swoop down on you. So if somebody looked at my profile in the afternoon and they're from a recruiting firm or from an organization in HR, I'm going to email them immediately. I see you've looked at my profile. Uh, possibly we can partner together. I've got candidates and graduates in these different industries. They come from these different majors. What do you got for me? If you're going to look at my profile, I'm going to look at yours. You poke me, I poke you back. That's why you don't want to be anonymous on LinkedIn. It's also intuitive. It connects you with the correct people. It pulls words from your profile and matches them. It's like a dating site. It can get a little annoying. Um, I had a candidate who was an engineering major from a different school, came to Berkeley. I'm helping him. But I was doing a search. So for the next three weeks, all of these engineers are popping up. So eventually it went away, but it pulled from a couple of little posts that I put on LinkedIn and was starting to suggest people to me. Now you've got your profile, what do you do with it? Groups. As soon as the bell rang in high school, I was out so fast people thought my cup was on fire. So I'm not a joiner, but I joined groups on LinkedIn. I probably am a member of 100 groups. Do I want to be in the accounting group? Not really, but I want every single person in that group because there's HR people, there's recruiters, there's office managers, there's hiring people, there's stylists, I need speakers, I need networking opportunities for my students. So I'm gonna join every single group that's relevant to me and my, my population. So you can join over 100, join 15 to 20. When you look at the roster of groups, pick the groups with the most memberships. You will get the best people in those groups. If you join a fashion group that has E people from Kansas, chances are they're strange. Stay away from those groups. <laughs> Engage with people in the groups. Don't just be in the group. Read what they say, comment on it, share it, post. Be an influencer. Just don't sit on the sidelines. If you want your group logos to be visible, you can keep it visible on your page. If you don't, you can hide them. Um, a couple years back, I was a big fan of the Los Angeles Lakers. So I had that group. But I found the only people who were watching, reading that group were people who hated the Lakers. So I was engaging in ugly stuff and I had to get out of that group. Um, I write poetry, but I don't write Hallmark poetry. There's no puppies and kittens. I was getting a lot of puppy and kitten groups, so I got out of that group. Um, I was an Obama group. 
And when I first started working with Berkeley, I said, I'm not sure if they're an Obama company. So I kind of hid that logo as well. No one has to know your whole world, but understand that by putting a, a logo there, you could be attracting someone that might actually help you in the least possible way. There might be something on your profile that's interesting to another human being. How do you engage with someone? People are very ego-driven. I see we're members of the same group. Your perspective on whatever they wrote is very interesting and I'd love to connect. Very non-threatening. Your posting for this position is exactly what I'm looking for. What would be the next steps? That's going right out to the guts. And the last one is I just wanted to reach out and let you know how impressive your profile and experience is. I hope to one day be able to showcase my experience. Yes? So is this when you message people to message? Or when, is this through email that... This um, is when you get into a group right. and you're now trying to connect to them. So, is this so one of the drop downs will be that you're members of the same group. Okay. Because I see like a message box where you can actually like contact You people. can do that only if you're connected. You have to first be connected. You can't message someone unless you are. Right. Do not pay for premium. <laughs> Premium is very expensive. You don't need it. Okay. Um, what do you recommend, by the way? Yeah, because they have like they pay for it for me at Berkeley. It's a lot of money, but we're we're using it for a million different reasons. A regular student or a graduate in a job search do not pay for it. It's not a free version. Absolutely. People are, are ego driven. So if you reach out to someone and say, "Oh my God, your profile is amazing," chances are like, "Oh, thank you so much. Can I help you in some way?" If you reach out and say, wow, you have a great profile. You know, I just graduated. Could you take a look at my resume? Instant disconnect. You're gone. They don't want that. That's not what networking is. I have people reach out to me and network, and I will connect to them. Sometimes two days later, thank you for connecting, Amy. Our software technology company is sleeping, and we're disconnected. I'm not going to read that. I don't want it on my homepage. Uh, don't sell to me. That's not what this is about. I'm sorry. So what kind of message? Thank you for connecting. Period. Okay. Now, if they looked at my profile and see what I do, I'm the assistant VP in career services and alumni relations in a college. Do I at all in my profile look like anybody who's technological? No. I hardly knew where to stick that thing in my computer. Right. So why are you reaching out to me for that? What you should be saying is, I would love for you to connect me to someone in your organization that might be able to help me with my organization, which is software technology. So this is like a similar just, organization. Right. Yeah. You want someone right. to get a referral from you, not just connect to you so that they can build connections right. and build their numbers. Yes. Okay. Besides the questions, if you have others, there's also a help center on the top of the LinkedIn page. And you can just ask anything, and all of these questions will be answered in case there's anything you think of afterwards. The do's of networking. Read what others say. Comment without ranting. That's sometimes really difficult for me. I tend to be a ranter. People have sometimes used LinkedIn as Facebook. So there's all sorts of Trump stuff going on. I just can't. So it takes a lot. I go, I write the comment, and then I'm like, delete it. And thank God Milagros, hi Milagros, she sits next to me, and I'll hear her say, what are you doing, Amy? Because she'll hear me muttering. So just remember, what you say on LinkedIn, everybody reads it. And even if you go back later and say, I shouldn't have said that, and delete it, it's still on theirs. Mm -hmm. And they're theirs, theirs, mm -hmm. and theirs, yeah. It's there forever. Stay away from commenting on Facebook like posts. Mm -hmm. Say something positive or don't say something at all. You went to a bad interview? Tell your counselor, tell me. Tell a little piece of paper, throw it in the air. But if you put it on LinkedIn, every recruiter is gonna say, whoa, she just blasted them, I'm not reaching out to her, because I'm next. It's just like going on an interview and blasting your employer. You don't do that. This is worse, this is permanent. Yeah, nobody wants to go on a date, on a second date with somebody <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't like everything for the sake of liking it. You look silly. Don't endorse people you don't know. You will get the option to endorse people. I was endorsed this morning by someone I have no idea who he is. And why he would endorse me for talent acquisition when I'm not in human resources beats me. Oh wait, because you want me to endorse you back. 
but I'm not going to do that because I don't know you. And just because your title says this, you might be really lousy at your job. So I'm not going to endorse you for anything because I don't know you. Make sure the recommendations you get also are well written. If you put a recommendation on your page that's not well written, it looks as bad for you as it does for the person who wrote it. I once had someone write an amazing recommendation for me. The first sentence of the, the recommendation was, Amy's the best hire I ever made. I thought it was great. She builds report, R-E-P-O-R-T, with all of her clients. It's not report. <laughs> what do I do? So I let it sit in my inbox for a little while, and then I wrote back and said, I really like this recommendation. Can you fix that word to report? And my ex-boss, who wrote it, said, well, you've always been a pain, and then he changed it. <laughs> I can't put a report, if it's report, do I not read what I am getting? Don't post, post Facebook-like pictures or comments ever, 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 and never be negative. I cannot stress that enough. I spend a great deal of time during the day reading posts on LinkedIn and writing to my students. You should take that down. Sorry you said that. Be an influencer. Have something to say that's of interest to your network and post often. As I said, what is often? well, for a normal person, often would be for a busy person. Yeah, well, for me, it's 12 times a day. Uh huh, easily. For a regular, normal human being who has maybe outside interests and likes to sleep, twice a day, a couple of times a week. Twice a day? Yeah, it's not that hard. It takes a second. You go up to your page, you write share and update, and you write, today is a great day to do research. What can you do for your job search today? Today's a good day to go on LinkedIn. Have you discovered any new companies? Literally takes a second. You post it, and when I post it, it hits 12,166 home pages in five seconds. And then when I'm sitting with the student, I'm usually going, okay, let's see how long it will be before I get a like. Or I'll recheck. My favorite is employers. I've got great graduates from accounting, legal studies, and fashion. What job openings do you have for me? And by the time the student leaves my office, I usually have a couple of emails or messages or job openings. That fast. And what do you recommend to folks? Like, because some people, like, what they do is they share other stuff. Do you think it's sharing is great? I think it's great, but you also have to find some stuff on your own. Yes. So I will share great articles, but then I'll also go Google and come up with job tips, yeah, trends of the day. I'm exactly. You don't just take other stuff and say, yeah, it's great. Yeah. You also want to take it and you want to say, good stuff. I love this article. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. So that the person realizes that you're not just filling content with their hard work and research. Okay, my daughter made me promise that I wouldn't call that an URL. Okay, it's a URL, and you should get a custom one so that it's on your resume. I knew it wasn't an URL. I just <laughs> humored her because she's, you know, she's, that's who she is. So you really want that on your resume. Your name, your address, your phone number, your email, and your URL for LinkedIn so that they can click on it and be brought to your wonderful profile. Because resume is a piece of paper, and your profile is you. It's everything about you. It's not just your resume. Why do we write on LinkedIn? It's your chance to showcase your knowledge, insight, and experience. I just wrote a post the other day, and it's gotten a couple of big hits, and it's called Attention Employers in Praise of the Baby Boomer. I work with a lot of baby boomers. I am very much a baby boomer. So when I have a company say to me, she's been in the same place 25 years, like, what's the problem with that? I can't interview her. I got pissed. We used to believe that was a good thing. That was loyalty. We wanted the gold watch at the end. There wasn't anything wrong with that. We learned how to do our jobs with fax machines and yellow pages. So I wrote that. I had a picture of a dinosaur, which everybody thought was great, because that's what they think we are. And it made a big impact. And I got a few job openings from companies who said, let me see them. Let me see your baby boomers. So it worked. You want to make sure it's very well written. Don't just get Excited at 4 o'clock in the morning and hit send. Read it over a few times. You can go back in and fix it, but you don't know who read the first copy with bad grammar or spelling. It's a great sounding board for your thoughts and ideas, but keep it relevant. I don't want to, I read something the other day about someone's dead dog. I'm sorry, but I'm not on Facebook because I don't want to know about your dead dog, and I don't necessarily want to know you from fifth grade. 
Although I have found that LinkedIn for women over 50 is like Facebook. They will find you anyway. <laughs> Don't know why. Um, it's your opportunity to really reach 350 million professionals. And you can write about any subject, and then you can tweet it afterwards. Okay. Log in every day. Comment, post, and share. Personalize your, your, your URL. Enter your contact information in your summary, your phone number and your email. You want them to find you again. Get active in your groups. Have at least 50 connections. Mm, no, you need to have at least 150 connections. Right now, everybody should be connecting to everybody in this room, if you're not. Um, and I did figure out that because we have two new users every second, and it took a lot of calculation, as I said, never passed a math class, but by the end of one hour, 7,200 people have just joined LinkedIn. This past hour. Don't pay for it. Um, add LinkedIn to your email signature. And make sure you pick a background that's a little bit more interesting than the four boring little choices that they give you. Questions? Okay, well, I'm Amy Suricelli, and I expect to get one, two, yeah. about 10 new connections so that I can be at 170 by the weekend. Um, I will give anybody my card who wants it, and if you would like, oh, you're going to be putting this somewhere? Yes, we're going to upload okay. the presentation and the video as well. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm also a glutton for punishment, so if any of you want to email me, I would be more than happy to take a look at your profile yeah. and make any suggestions. Do not pay a LinkedIn person to, to work with your profile. They charge $100 to $200, and I could do it in seven minutes for free. Yep. Super. Okay, you're going to receive mine right away. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Are you okay? Thank you. So let's see who have, uh, we have 